All right, guys, today we're going to talk about some of the most beautiful survival and bushcrafting knives in the collection. And in case you don't know, before you get too mad, this video will be about my Bark River knives, the, not, the Bark Rivers that I've collected. And I, I have definitely had more Barkies than this throughout my time, but these are the ones that are currently in my rotation. And honestly, I'm pretty darn happy with each and every one of these. Some of them I've had for a long time. Some of them are semi-recently acquired. We're going to go from smallest to largest and we're gonna go from there. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. If you don't like Bark River knives, you're probably gonna to wanna to click away at after this point, because like I said, this video is going to be on the Bark Rivers in my collection. And I do realize, and I get a lot of comments talking about, you know, like how can I like Bark River knives? Or a lot of people have had negative experiences with them. And there are definitely some downsides. Sometimes the sheath retention isn't always exactly the best with these knives. And it's another really important thing as I try to express with most of my videos on my Barkies that these knives are handmade. These are semi-custom knives. Each and every one is ground by hand. Each, you know, like let's just say the fullers on these this uh, cub here are, you know, slightly asymmetrical because this is a hand done thing, right? Like each and everything that is done to these knives is done by hand. So I think a lot of the criticism for these knives is in the fact that this is very little um, machine processing. Like they use machines to get to the rough shape of a knife and then make the actual knife by hand. So a lot of your Barkies are that way. But I think broadly speaking, especially nowadays, like when Bark River knives were new and the industry was still a bit newer, a little bit greener, Barkies used to be more expensive. But in my opinion, like looking at this knife right here, this is a uh, Bark River Knives Strike Force 2. This thing costs a, from factory about $350. If you take that and put it up against um, one of the knives that often people think I love to hate on, but I don't love to hate on any knife in my collection. I've obviously bought all of them for reasons. But once again, you know, just comparing it, this is a Winkler Knives Blue Ridge Hunter versus a Bark River Knives Strike Force 2. These two cost the same amount of money, roughly speaking but for that much money you're getting CPM 3v steel mosaic pins and a very beautiful burl wood handle and so in my opinion I think especially now that like we look at knives realistically Bark River knives was never cheap but they really haven't increased their prices over the years unlike many other makers once again blinker blinker winkler knives you know um, a lot of knife companies and knife manufacturers have increased their prices over the time even Benchmade you know so you could get a production Benchmade or a semi-custom Bark River for about the same price. So definitely things to keep in mind and that's kind of some of the value reasons why I like Barky. I'm not going to say that Bark River knives is value oriented because they're not, but once again when you look at things like Falkneven knives, a lot of these things like the Bark River Bravo 1, you know, uh, things like the Cub are running in similar price ranges to those Falknevens because like I said, a lot of knife companies, most company, most knife companies indeed have actually raised their prices throughout the years. Barky has honestly remained pretty much the same. So they were definitely more expensive in the beginning and now I feel like they are just more on par with the pricing um, that we see nowadays. Anyways, guys, that's kind of a breakdown of Bark River knives. And like I said, I've owned over a dozen Barkies in my time, and I've never seen one that um, has been poorly made from a functional standpoint. Once again, the you know, grinds might be slightly asymmetrical because they're hand done, but functionally speaking, none of my knives have um, ever been poorly built or manufactured. I have had one Barky fail on me, but that was really more a user error and using the knife in a way that it wasn't intended. But the cool thing is Mike Stewart really does stand behind his knives. So if you ever break one, if you ever damage one, even if it's purposeful, like he has even talked about um, people like Joe X before. And um, he has mentioned that, you know, like, even if you go out of your way to break a Bark River on purpose, if you send it back to them, they will replace it, no questions asked. And I have had that personal experience happen where I did, once again, using a knife in the way it probably wasn't intended to. I have broken a Barky and uh, he sent it, or I sent it back, and uh, he sent me a Bark River Knives Bushcrafter as a replacement that I asked for, I should say. I asked for a Bushcrafter as a replacement and I got one. So to be fair, um, I, I've had nothing but good treatment with them. But anyways, guys, that's beside the point. Let's talk about it. 
Okay, like I said, going smallest to largest, the first one up is going to be my Prototype Rising Wolf. Now I got this one in a trade, to be fair, I did not buy this one, but this is a little bit of an older school Barky. Um, this one is made in A2. Now you guys might notice, maybe if you can catch it in the lighting just right, I really tried to hide it, but um, this one has just an ever so slightly um, made micro bevel, and that is for two reasons. Partly this knife, once again, sometimes Bark River knives, sheaths retention, suck this one is no exception to that um, some of them are honestly good don't get me wrong but this one's sheath is not the best so this one had an unfortunate um, encounter with my concrete floor that I film this these videos I film them in my garage so there's a concrete floor this one happened to meet the concrete floor at a a faster than I would have liked speed so I did get a little bit of um, tooth chip out down here and so in typical a2 fashion it kind of chipped out a little bit but i put this guy on my wicked edge and gave it a very unperceptible micro bevel and personally i'm like dang it i'm really sad that that happened but also too um, i will say a2 well heat treated is actually really really easy to take care of and so once again you cannot like look at this or <laughs> looking at this from this angle you know unless you like really get up close you can barely even tell that there is a micro bevel or that there was any edge damage at all and once again using a wicked edge i was able to just dial it in and give it a really really small micro bevel so this thing is hair whittling sharp once again and yeah. Now, as far as micro bevels go, it's also worth noting that pretty much every Bark River, to my knowledge, is made with a convex grind. And personally, I actually don't hate micro bevels when they're like well done micro bevels, like this one was done on a Wicked Edge. I don't actually hate micro bevels on convex knives. It can make them actually much better in my findings and opinion. Some people will disagree with that, but it's kind of the way I found it. All right, next one up is my classic and go-to much beloved Bark River Knives Bushcrafter in CPM 3V. Now this is actually not my original one. My original one, as I've mentioned multiple times before, in a great act of stupidity, I actually sold it and bought something else, regretted it and bought another Bark River Knives Bushcrafter in 3V. This one is one of the guys, one of the, the knives that guys love to chastise me and say I never use, but actually I do use the hell out of this knife. It just really doesn't show Show it partly because it's CPM 3V and partly because it's satin finished so I usually just clean it up and it actually looks brand new. Um, next one up is the Bark River Knives Grizzly. Now this one's one that I didn't actually know existed and this is the smaller brother to the uh, sorry, not Grizzly, this is the Cub. The smaller brother to the Grizzly, this is the Cub. And I did not know that this hat actually existed, but this is really a cool knife. And while I'm not the largest fan of this kind of fuller design, um, you know, fullers are cool, they're just not really my thing. But outside of that, I actually really love the Puko styled handle, um, or, um, not quite Puko, but sorry, Leku styled handle here with the really large flare at the end. And the Cub uses about a five and a quarter inch blade. So it's really a functional um, knife in, in its size. Now, this one's also a CPM 3V. In fact, most of my Barkies have been CPM 3V. And that's partially because I, if you guys haven't noticed as a whole, really do love CPM 3V as a knife steel. So you'll just notice most of my knives are made out of CPM 3V. And uh, I, I've made other videos talking about CPM 3V, but it's just usually my go-to steel. I feel like it offers for outdoor use a good amount of edge retention, a good amount of toughness, and a good amount of durability slash shock resistance. So yeah. Now next one up is a rather a recent acquisition. This is the Strike Force 2. And this one's definitely the most beautiful. It's in the Thulia Burl Wood with the beautiful mosaic pins. I'll try to get you guys some close-ups there because it is absolutely stunning. I really do love the Strike Force. This is the Strike Force 2. For me, this is definitely one of those knives that's a little bit more tactical leaning, but it's still also very much a practical field knife. So um, yeah, absolutely love it. It's gorgeous knife. The only thing I kind of dislike about it, but this is classic to the Strike Force lineup, is that it has this really redundant um, lanyard hole and then a lanyard um, like kind of slot here. So I just put my lanyard through the slot just because I actually like the slot, it gives it some you know wiggle room there. But it's kind of when you look at it for too long, it kind of looks a little bit dorky because it's like, wait, is there a lanyard hole and a lanyard slot? Like typically with knives, um, and I'll just show. 
my um, Architect 6.5. This has a lanyard slot on it. So typically you have one or the other. You either have a slot or you have a hole. You don't typically have both, but uh, yeah, it's, it's still cool. The knife is so cool, and uh, I really do like the Strike Force design overall. It has just that slightest flare of recurve, as you guys can hopefully see there. Like, it just has a slight flare of recurve, and then gets a little bit larger there. So it's like, in my mind, kind of just a little bit kookery esque. Um, but yeah, very cool knife. And I've been wanting a Strike Force for a while, and I thought the Strike Force 2 was just a little bit better for actual survival use. And yes, especially come this summer, I will actually be using this knife. And I think that's part of like what adds to the stigma of people disliking Bark River knives as a whole is Bark River does make some very beautiful knives, like some actual very gorgeous looking knives. And oftentimes when you actually deal with the people who collect Bark River knives, there's quite a few people that get knives like this and they just don't want to use them. And I can totally resonate with that. Once again, it's like, this is a very beautiful knife and uh, you know, it's very gorgeous. I wouldn't want to like break it, but at the same time too, I get my knives to use regardless of how beautiful they look or how rough they look or how, you know, like durable um, their aesthetic is, I get them to use them. So regardless of how pretty it is, they do actually see use and they will see use. All right, rounding it off with the last one, and I totally realize I meant to say like going in order and size, just totally skip this one, but this is the Bark River Knives Bravo one. This is probably one of the cooler ones on my list um, because of more of my like personal story with the, the Bravo one. I had, when I first started bushcrafting and getting into the outdoor scene, I had encountered Bravo ones, but I actually really hated the Bravo one initially, and it's because it has a near quarter inch thick um, spine to it or thickness, this is just a very chunky knife and it has a like I want to say it's a four and a quarter inch blade like it's it's pretty small for its thickness I mean to give you some reference point you know here is a the grizzly again or sorry the cub not the grizzly the cub and so you guys can see here this is the cub and it against the Bravo one the cub is bigger but the cub is thinner as well. Not substantially thinner, but you guys can hopefully see there that it's just a little bit thinner. It's the cub on this side and um, it just always struck me as like, it's this really tiny knife, it's really thick, but what I never really had considered about it until actually acquiring one and using it is that because it has a near full height a convex edge to it, it has a very usable actual cutting edge, but given its thickness, its actual like overall thickness, it is very robust and very, you know, durable. And so that's kind of like how this guy came along. It also has a very rich military background. Um, and I've done other videos talking about the Bravo one, so I won't get into like its background in this uh, video, but it has a very rich military background. And I think that that is also pretty cool. But anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you enjoyed looking at my Bark River knives that I have, at least at this time, I will more than likely add more Barkies because I think, and I've mentioned this in previous videos, one of my favorite things about Bark River, and I've said like if I could only have one like outdoor knife brand to collect knives from, it would probably be BRK because this, hopefully this kind of smattering of knives shows you that like these guys make a wide variety of different blade shapes, different blade sizes, different blade thicknesses, different handle styles and different materials. Like Bark River and Mike Stewart do just about everything under the sun, whether it's classic inspired, you know, fighting buoy knives, whether it's weird, weird amalgamations of, you know, like um, recurved kind of kukri style knives. They make actual kukris, they make actual choppers, they make everything under the sun. And, you know, they go right down to small, like fixed blades that you could even pocket carry if you wanted to do such a thing. Um, so they really realistically make everything under the sun from small little pocket or you know neck knife style blades all the way up to heavy big choppers um, they, they make everything under the sun and so they just cover all of their bases like I said they do it in usually quality steels and outside of you know first production runs final production runs typically speaking most bark rivers are actually very reasonably priced like a standard bark river like this uh, grizzly here you know goes for about 225 dollars something like this um, bushcrafter goes for about 200 dollars right these uh, bravo ones and a2 go for about 150 dollars so like honestly everything outside of you know like your prototypes outside of your you know kind of weird um, collectible uh, bark rivers and most of these are like collectible for those 
reasons, like I said, like prototypes or like final production runs, first production runs, stuff like that that have second kind of cool collector's value typically are actually like outside of those are typically actually very reasonably priced. So in my opinion, that's kind of my experience with Bark River Knives and I think they're really good. But once again, your mileage may vary and there are certainly some YouTubers on here that have had bad experience with Bark River. And I will say Mike Stewart is not always the most palatable person to deal with. He is very like, he gives it to you straight and he doesn't care. Um, and so I think that is also part of what kind of causes issues with Barky is that, you know, they, he, the, the owner is, he will take care of you, but he's also very short, very blunt, very to the point. And I don't think a lot of people actually really enjoy his personality um, in that regard, I should say. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video guys. As always, God bless. And 